Hello, good morning. Good morning. So welcome for the session, and thank you for uh, uh, coming here. And uh, today, I'm glad to um, present the, uh, the IPv6 project that we've done in the um, OPMV, and uh, with my colleague, Shrida um, Gadam from uh, Red Hat, and uh, Prakash from uh, uh, Huawei. Um, so today we um, briefly will review um, what the project is and uh, some can give some introduction of key project facts and uh, what the goals and the deliverables of this project and what we have released in the OPMV Brahmapuja release and in, the, uh, in February. And uh, um, then Shuda will talk about uh, what, is the, um, what it really means in, the, uh, from in terms of the how to use a service VM as an IPv6 router and what uh, uh, has achieved and uh, what, why we do this. And uh, Prakash will introduce about our planning for uh, a Colorado release, which is planned for uh, August. And that's the next big release for the uh, OPMV. And of course, you know, we will need to acknowledge all of the contributors and to the project, and it's a community effort. And we have uh, lots of lots of good great contributions from all the different companies and uh, in the whole industry. Um, the key project facts. So OPMV, everybody knows that it's the integrated carrier grade platform and to accelerate the introduction of the uh, NFV products and services. And so OPMV was founded in October 2014 and uh, so IPv6 projects was the approved as a formal project in November, November 25th, 2014, about the uh, one month after the uh, uh, OPMV was founded. And uh, so all of the projects in OPMV is in the incubation stage and we're going through the different the, uh, life cycles and continue to develop projects and to incubating the project to be more mature and maturer and uh, in terms of feature and functions, performance, et cetera, et cetera. And so we have our own the uh, Garrett repository, which is IPv6, and uh, has uh, our own the uh, project wiki. And you can go to the uh, uh, wiki.opmv.org slash uh, display slash IPv6, IPv6 plus home is our wiki page. And uh, so I'm the uh, uh, project lead and uh, primary contact of the project. And uh, we'll, I'm very happy to have the support from the, all the different the companies and from the uh, uh, industry, including and I'm from AT&T, from the Brocade, and from Cisco, Clearpath, Networks, Cloud-based Solutions, Huawei, uh, Nokia, Red Hat, and Spirant. And we will have the uh, bi-weekly meetings on, on every other Fridays at 8 a.m. the uh, Pacific time. And uh, so everybody is, if anybody is interested, and you're welcome to join the, uh, meet, uh, the conference uh, calls and all the uh, logistics, uh, in, can, you can find it in, in our website. Um, so what, I mean, what's our goal and the deliverables project? And so IPv6 is very important and the feature from the network infrastructure perspective, right? That's the future of the networking, and that's no doubt. And uh, um, so, um, so project goal is that we need to have the meta distributions of IPv6 enabled OPMV platform, because OPMV is, provides the uh, uh, integrated carrier grade and um, NF with the products and the services, and this needs to be, um, from a future perspective, it's in, in, enabled and, uh, by IPv6. And also, the, uh, we need to provide a methodology how to revolve in the IPv6 capabilities and of the OPMV. And uh, um, so that's a goal, but in terms of the specific deliverables, and, uh, and we are targeting to have an uh, integrated package and, uh, and consider basic upstream components, which is the same as the, uh, what OpenV will be integrating, including the OpenStack, including the different SD controllers, including uh, all the different type of hypervisors and the storage and uh, network uh, uh, um, virtual networks and uh, running on different uh, OpenV community labs. And uh, um, so we need to, um, because of the uh, nature of the IPv6, right, and so we need to have the auto configuration script and to automate the uh, uh, configurations and provisionings of IPv6, the, some features and some enhanced the functions and on top of this platform, and for those features that can be automatically uh, configured. And also we need to have um, the user guide and installation guide for some features which may not be uh, uh, necessary to be automated but uh, uh, needs to step by step manually configured and on top of the platform after the uh, uh, OPMV is deployed by these installers. And we will need to develop the test cases to test those features and on top of the platform and uh, the specific for IPv6 features in addition and to the uh, platform's uh, uh, function te functional testing and yardstick testing. 
And uh, um, we are cons uh, uh, considering to do the uh, gap analysis and to see um, what are the features that's currently not, uh, are not available in the, uh, uh, from the platform perspective and uh, what's the uh, roadmap methodology to bridge um, those gaps and, and for the future releases. Um, in the end of February, an OpenV had a second release called Brahmaputra release, and which is a river in India. And uh, um, so what we delivered in the Brahmaputra release include an integrated meta distribution of the package, and that's enabled by the uh, installers. And the installer will install the basic OpenV package, and we will have the installation guide and, uh, um, for manually uh, install the uh, 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 service VM as IPv6 V router in, on top of this platform. And in order to do that, and we need to support two different scenarios. So OpenMV supports like more than 10 different scenarios for the Brahma Pusher release. And for uh, IPv6 specific features, right? And we need to enable two different scenarios. One is the uh, no SDN, no feature. And the other one is ODL, the L2, uh, 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 no feature. And the reason is the, uh, for no SDN, meaning that it's pure open stack. And uh, because the neutron supports the uh, uh, IPv6 route in the L3, the uh, agent. And, but for ODL, the uh, L3 routing is not supported yet, and so we only need to use the uh, uh, L2 switching, but still using the uh, neutron L3 agent for routing functionality for the IPv6. So that's two different features. But of course, we have four different installers, and different, depending on uh, which installer you're using, you use the Apex, the Fuel, Compass, or the Joid, and you have different parameters as we instructed in our installation guide. But that's two uh, scenarios that's been supported. And uh, okay, we have an installation guide and step-by-step uh, -step instructions and uh, including and uh, how to ins use those different installers and which parameters you have to give to these installers in, in order to uh, achieve those uh, scenario, basic scenario first, and then you add the uh, 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 IPv6 the V router and uh, do the yardstick uh, testing. And uh, yeah, we developed a case with the uh, uh, Yardstick project. And Yardstick is uh, another OpenMV project, which basically uh, targeted for testing the OpenMV infrastructure on top of the uh, uh, Rally and Tapest, which basically t tests the uh, OpenStax, the uh, APIs, and uh, uh, performance. And we have done the gap analysis, and with the, uh, 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 I wouldn't say it's gap analysis, but some kind of analysis of the features that's been supported and or not supported in open, uh, OpenStack Liberty release and in, also in the Open Daylight Beryllium release. And uh, um, we'll talk about it later. Um, so now um, I will introduce the uh, uh, Shrida, and he will give the uh, uh, more uh, details about the what's our contributions and what's the service we have at the router. Shrida. Uh, we have contributed to some of the IPv6 features in the upstream components like uh, OpenStack and OpenDelight. So some of our contributions with respect to OpenStack include we added support for IPv6 in the Neutron L3HA routers. We added support for IPv6 address resolution protection, basically where we program certain flows on the OVS switches to make sure that the VM is not sending out neighbor advertisement packets for the IP addresses and the MAC addresses that it does not own. Recently, we added support in the OpenStack Neutron code base to advertise the DNS information as well as MTU information as part of router advertisements. And working with the community, we also added support in the DevStack installer to set up an OpenStack distribution on an IPv6 infrastructure. Coming to Open Daylight, when we started using Open Daylight SDN controller along with the uh, OpenStack, we noticed that when we create an IPv6 subnet, uh, we noticed some Java exceptions because of which we could not uh, continue with our use case. So we addressed those use case, those exceptions, and we were able to proceed further. Currently, we're actively working with the community to implement the IPv6 router in the controller. In the next few slides, we'll be talking about uh, what was the goal when we started off this project how the design looks like, uh, how the underlay network topology is, the detailed setup steps and the gaps we have identified and found them in both OpenStack as well as ODL. So one of the important goals that we wanted to kind of achieve as an IPv6 sub-team in OpenFE as part of the B release was to provide a platform that can run an IPv6 service VM that is capable of doing two things. One 
periodically advertising router advertisements to the VMs that belong to a different tenant. And the second thing is to provide IPv6 external connectivity to those VMs. Basically, the idea is to have a platform that will allow you to try out different other use cases and also for, for us to have some kind of open innovation. Now, apart from this, another important thing that we had in mind was to identify the gaps and try to contribute as a team wherever possible in those upstream components. Now, how does the design look like? So let me take you through this diagram a little bit. So onto your left-hand side, you can see a network node, and you see two compute nodes, one in the middle and one to your right side. So the admin for this open stack would create two networks, one represented in the brown color, which is the external or the provider network. The other one, which is in the blue color, is the shared tenant network. Now, you say, for example, you have tenant A who is kind of interested in providing an IPv6 service VM. He will spawn a service VM on, with two interfaces, one connected to the external network, and the other one connected to the shared tenant network. And when you have, other, in this setup, other tenants who are, kind, who are interested to have this uh, service VM use case, they can spawn the VMs on the shared tenant network and kind of leverage this IPv6 uh, infrastructure. So here, the compute node one is hosting the IPv6 service VM, and that's the one which is actually acting as IPv6 router for the VMs that are hosted on the compute node two. We wanted to achieve this design uh, both with uh, pure OpenStack as well as with uh, OpenStack and ODL. And by the way, it can be easily extended to any other SGN controller that is integrated with uh, OpenFE today. Now, if you actually pick up the OpenFE installers like Apex, Joid, and so on, we can choose certain scenarios which will help you to kind of replicate the setup and try out this uh, service VM use case which have been mentioned, the, scenario, the two scenarios which have been mentioned in the previous slides. So the Handley network topology consists of three different nodes. One is uh, OpenStack control network and compute node. The other one is a pure OpenStack compute node. And the third one is an open daylight control node. We tried this particular service VM use case, uh, both with OpenStack Kilo as well as OpenStack Liberty. And with, when we were using an SDN controller, we tried with Open Daylight Lithium as well as Beryllium. We identified some gaps, uh, which we'll be talking about in the next few slides. OpenFE B release notes provide detailed instructions on how to achieve this use case, what are the various REST APIs that are involved, what are the gaps, and some of the best practices that we have identified. So I suggest that you know people who are interested in this particular use case to please take a look and reach out to us if you have any questions. We'll be more than happy to help you. So how does, this is a simplified view of what the service VM is uh, all about. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, you have a service VM that is connected to an IPv6 router, which is an external or a physical IPv6 router in your infrastructure. It acquires an IPv6 address using Slack. So the default route automatically points to the upstream external router. And on the internal tenant-facing side, you have a shared network, and you have a couple of VMs. Say, for here in this particular diagram, you can see VMs from tenant A and VMs from tenant B. So the service VM is going to act like a router to these VMs, where it periodically advertises this router advertisements and also forwards the traffic that is coming from these VMs onto the external IPv6 router. Now, in order to achieve this particular use case, so we kind of evaluated a couple of options. One was to use a metadata or a cloud init script to push the necessary configuration into the service VM. The other thing we evaluated was to use a snapshot image, which has all the required packages installed and started on boot up. We prefer to go with the option one, which is the metadata thing, because it's a script, as you all know, it's a script. So you can customize it according to your needs and try out other use cases with using the OpenFE installers. So that is one of the main reasons we had. The other thing is you can pick any standard cloud image, like for example, you can use Fedora or Ubuntu or CentOS, whatever image you're interested in, and try this service VM use case with that particular QCO2 image. 
So on a high level, what this metadata script does is, like, like for example, most of you know that when you have a cloud image, uh, most of the time only the default interface is brought up and not the additional interfaces. So the cloud in it, or the metadata script, would actually enable the additional interfaces, and it would also set the proc entries uh, that are required for IPv6 forwarding inside the VM. It downloads these uh, necessary packages, which is RADVD in our case, and it also pushes the required configuration to enable the Slack or DHCP v6 kind of use cases inside the service VM. Now, while this is a simple use case, our main idea was to provide a platform, as I mentioned earlier, and by tweaking, uh, doing some minimal changes into the met metadata script, you'll be able to enhance this use case to other things. Like, for example, you're interested, say, for example, you're interested in having a prefix delegation kind of use case. You can have a PD client running inside the service VM, have a PD server external to your service VM, and you know, you can run a Quagga client. I mean, you can try out different other use cases uh, with some minimal changes to this uh, particular script. With that, I'll give it to Bin to talk about the steps. Thank you, Shrita. Um, so we summarized the document in those uh, setup steps, and uh, we'll give you a very brief introduction. Um, so we talk about two different scenarios. That's for the installer scenarios to install the open web platform. And here we'll talk the, the scenarios, the concept here is different from the scenarios of the OPMV scenario. But here's a scenario about how we deploy um, the, uh, uh, the IPv6 on the specific uh, combination of the OpenStack plus the Open Daylight, which um, beyond of the standard the OPMV installation package, right, and basically you don't have choice, just the standard the OPMV Liberty, uh, OpenStack Liberty plus the uh, Open Daylight, the uh, uh, Beryllium release. But here, if you wanted to try it manually, because it's, you don't have to automatically install, you can you install OpenStack and uh, Open Daylight by, by, by your own, right? And uh, so that's how we can have achieved different flexibility of different combinations of um, OpenStack and SD controllers. So that's what we call the, uh, the, this scenario. In, in this context, that's what the scenario means. Okay, so basically we have um, three different scenarios that we have explored and want to share with you. And the first is the pure OpenStack environment. And so basically, that's, that's basically that's a simple scenario. That's just a one stack, no SD controller, right? And uh, so no SD controller will be implemented as the uh, neutral backend. And, uh, and the second scenario is the OpenStack plus Open Daylight, but it's Open Daylight Lithium release SR3 or the earlier release. And so why are we using this? Because when we experiment with the uh, lithium release, and especially SR3 and earlier release, right? And so we tried it, and before the beryllium was officially released. And so we found that it was back in the uh, 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 lithium SR3 and before. And uh, um, so when we um, spawned the, uh, the uh, IPv6, the uh, neutron, and namespace for the router, and uh, there is the uh, Java exceptions. And uh, so um, Shrita provided a fix for the uh, 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 patch to fix this, the uh, Java exception, this bug, and, but it's not applicable until um, uh, Lithium SR4 and all the later, for example, Berlin release. And so in this case, and in order to work around those Java exceptions, and we have to um, manually spawn the uh, RADVD daemon in the uh, neutral namespace in order to uh, 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 advertising uh, the, uh, the, the prefix right, for the IPv6 address and to the um, service VM. And, but in the uh, third scenario, and if we are using the OpenStack, uh, I'm sorry, Open, Open Daylight, Beryllium, and the SR4, uh, or the Lithium SR4, and uh, for the uh, later release after that, and we don't have to uh, manually spawn the uh, RADVD uh, a demon in the uh, neutral namespace. And uh, um, so that's the difference. That's why we have the specific scenario just to, to work around those, the, uh, uh, the bug in the uh, Java exceptions. Okay? And if you want to try, try the different uh, uh, SD controllers like Open Country or, or the owners, and you, will have, you may have some different uh, 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 findings, and uh, um, feel free to try it and uh, share with us and, uh, and we'll share the experience and, uh, to make it better. Um, so, once we know those different scenarios and what different workarounds, and uh, so if we want to, if we want to manually uh, install the OpenStack, manually open, uh, install the instant controllers, so that's the steps that we're going to use. And also, we, um, we, in order to minimize the dependency on the physical infrastructure, for instance, physical, the lab or the uh, resources, and what we did is that in the original design, in the 
first you can see that the service VM directly connects to the uh, external, the physical IPv6 router and, uh, at the edge of the uh, data center or any of the physical infrastructure. But uh, um, we also um, experimented in the single laptop and basically we are not dependent um, on the, uh, any physical IPv6 router. But in order to make it work, and I will dis describe in the, in, in the next slide and how we make it work, but uh, basically we, um, we are available to experiment in a single laptop, and, but of course we have to have sufficient the, uh, the RAM and the disk storage in order to spawn the different, at least the three VMs on, on the uh, laptop to ensure the performance on that. And then we need to um, set up the Open Daylight controller and uh, on one of the VM on a single laptop, and we set up the uh, OpenStack controller node on the uh, uh, second VM on the uh, 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 single laptop. And there's instructions available and in, uh, in the more details right in the uh, uh, on our wiki side installation guide. And then we need to set up the OpenStack and the computer node right as an OpenStack compute. And then we uh, follow the steps. We create the uh, uh, different networks, create the uh, neutron the uh, namespace and create the subnets, create the, uh, uh, the VMs, and uh, uh, Nova boot image the, uh, uh, spawn those VMs, and uh, pass the, uh, 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 the metadata into the uh, VM, and uh, set up this environment and complete those setups. Okay, all the details and instructions are available um, uh, for that wiki and uh, for the instructions. And as I just mentioned, and in order to minimize dependency on the physical infrastructure, and you don't have to install it in a physical uh, lab. And uh, what we did here is we added a neutron uh, namespace, which we call IPv6 router in, uh, on the uh, uh, left-hand side. Yeah, the, and the lower left side, you can see the uh, IPv6 router, which was basically the na neutron namespace that simulates the physical um, IPv6 router, which typically will be installed in the data center. Okay. And so in this case, the service VM will connect it to the, uh, uh, the uh, neutral namespace, which is simulates router in order to make sure that our testing passes. Okay. And of course, on the right-hand side, that's a typical the, uh, setup of the uh, VM. And, in, and if we are using the uh, um, Open, uh, open Daylight, the uh, variant release, and the, the green, the tenant network can be shared by the other tenants, as Srila just mentioned before. And uh, um, so that's the net topology after the overlay setup. And so that's exactly the copy in the, from the uh, Horizon user interface, the same thing as we shown in the past slide, but that's the copy from the Horizon user uh, interface and, uh, uh, for that. And through this experiment, and uh, we uh, analyzed what are supported already, what are what not supported, uh, still not supported in an OpenStack and Open Daylight, and uh, we're very glad that most of the uh, uh, useful features have already been supported, and uh, well, while uh, some some features are missing, and not necessarily the problem with the uh, OpenStack or, or, or the Open Daylight, but maybe because of lacking of the different use cases, for uh, right, and. Uh, um, in the, from the open, uh, open daylight perspective, and uh, for example, the functions not supported is, the, I think the biggest uh, uh, function is um, in the uh, open daylight, the uh, layer three routing, right? It don't support uh, IPv6 layer three routing. They also don't support the uh, IPv6 address management. And that's the, uh, I think that's a big gap here. And so Shreda is driving um, the support in the uh, network provide the uh, projects and OBSDB project in the uh, um, ODL in, in order to uh, bridge this gap to make sure that this, um, the supporting of IPv6 level through routing and uh, IPv6 management is support, will be supported in the roadmap for the open data future release, right? And also the security groups, the features also not supported uh, uh, in open daylight. And uh, once the uh, L3 routing has been supported in the trade also the uh, uh, drive the uh, uh, implementation that and to f make it fully support IP uh, uh, security group features for IPv6. And uh, so we listed the shared, net, shared tenant network because of, uh, uh, lithium doesn't support shared tenant network, but really already supports, but we listed it just because we have done the exercise for the, both the releases of the uh, uh, open daylight. And from OpenStack perspective, I think the, uh, um, I would say that pretty much that everything is supported, especially from the overlay perspective, right? And all the IP fees have been supported. And from the underlay perspective, and so one, and uh, um, the feature not supported is that the uh, statically assigned IPv6 address and is not, uh, not supported from OpenStack perspective, and especially and in the same fashion as we, when you support IPv4, and uh, um, because it's uh, um, usually the IPv6 address was assigned dynamically through a Slack or the uh, uh, DHCP, the dynamic uh, allocation of the uh, address. 
Fluorine IP is not supported by IP, uh, for IPv6, and I think that's a good reason. And because it's um, for the IPv6, the address space is much, much bigger than the IPv4, and you don't need to have the uh, Fluorine IP, right? And because you don't need NAT. And uh, for the internal IP address, the uh, translation to the external IP address. So that's, I mean, basically there's no, uh, um, I would say, uh, uh, urgent use case on that. Yeah, because that can be uh, naturally supported by, uh, from the uh, uh, address space perspective for IPv6. And uh, um, additional IPv6 extensions and IPsec, IPv6, anycast, multicast, not supported. But I think that's not because of the uh, 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 neutral. It doesn't support it because IG, um, IGMP is not supported. And for IPv4, even, it doesn't support a multicast, et cetera. So um, it's if there's urgent need and the use case requirement for industry, and once neutral supports the uh, multicast in general, and those both IPv4 and IPv6 will be supported as well. So that's not specific. The, uh, uh, some Something that's uh, is something wrong there. Um, so, um, so VM access and to the um, uh, 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 metadata and uh, between the, uh, um, the, the the metadata servers is still the end point of the meta servers. Right now, the infrastructure is only supports IPv4, so, so that's the uh, it's not something that can be addressed in in a short term. And because if you want to use the meta server and you need to go to the uh, meta server, that's that's been that's that's been uh, uh, reality in the infrastructure part. Okay. And the distributed virtual routing and uh, nature is not supported by for IPv6. That's because the uh, floating IPv6 is not supported. And uh, so the, the way that Neutron is doing is that for the uh, uh, floating IP for the IPv4, and all the traffic will be forwarded to the uh, uh, network node, right? And the network will combine the traffic and uh, do the uh, 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 um, source routing and to uh, send the traffic through the centralized the uh, new uh, network node and to the uh, outside external so it's it's uh, so, so 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 that's nature we call it nature is not supported but i think it's um, it's because we don't need the ip following ip5 ip6 it's, it's it could be easily in and added and to that to distinguish and the uh, IPv6 and the IPv4. For the IPv6, they can be easily, uh, no matter it's floating IP or not, and just directly from the uh, computer node directly go to the uh, uh, external net. And uh, of course, the GRE VX and tunneling endpoint still requires IPv4. And uh, as of the latest status, and uh, um, the Linux kernel already support the uh, VXLAN endpoint as IPv6 since the kernel version 4.4. And OVS and uh, also um, will plan to support the uh, uh, IPv6 endpoint for, for VXLAN starting from uh, OVS 4.6. And once those are supported and uh, could be the patch um, in the neutron to support the endpoint. And the GIE, we don't know, we are not uh, know the details of the uh, GIE endpoint yet. And uh, um, it could be on the load, load map for, uh, from the, uh, on, the, on the kernel side to support it at first, and then on the OVS user space and uh, on the uh, neutron part. So now I, uh, uh, Introduce my colleague Prakash, and he will talk about the uh, uh, the uh, release planning for the Colorado release. So, what I will do is, uh, I think uh, Bin and Sridhar, uh, they have been from the beginning very excellent team they have formed, and uh, obviously, uh, in the Colorado release, what we are looking at this time is, can we do a full IPv6 install? automatically, because we have a manual process, step one, two, three, as they described. To do that, what do we do? So there are two portions to it. One is the underlay, and other is the overlay. So can we do underlay fully IPv6 installation? And of course, we can do it because support is there. But then there are some gotchas like we saw, uh, like we have to do uh, using uh, L2, ODL L2 scenario. And so that's one portion. The other is overlay. So generally when we talk about these things, we have to look at what is the traffic. Is it north-south traffic? Is it east-west traffic? Those are the terms we use in data center. The other portion is we need to talk about tunneling because that's important from the point of view of how do we do the uh, uh, data plane traffic which needs acceleration and which needs support from the IPv6 system. So here we see that that's why the first is automation of what we have done. Simple, straightforward, with some changes that we expect in ODL or other uh, uh, SDN controllers. 
So the second portion is how do we uh, test if we have to uh, expand it to WAN. So that means you have multiple sites, and in those multiple sites, how do we route the IPv6? Or what is it riding on in the underlay? So if you look at underlay multiple instances of OpenStack, we can have two of them, and we did ask for, and we know that Intel I, uh, pod three, we have been allocated, and we have looked at some allocation for VLAN so that we can do it with the underlay. That's one. The second is, if we do, uh, now this, this is I'm talking about now, let's say north-south. So we, you saw the router, uh, that is the service, v, v router service router, which is based on purely IPv6. It did uh, forward traffic, either it is uh, external, which is north-south, or it is east-west, which is within the one VM tenant, tenant to another tenant, or through the shared tenant. So if you look at that, so in the overlay for multi-site, we want to do external, which is not south traffic. And that is one way of doing through service, v -service, service routers or external router with all the prefix delegation and all set up already. The, the other one is underlay if we do V router at multi-site, but we want to connect the east-west traffic. Now east-west traffic can be done through either the Ethernet VPN, that is eVPN you can call it, or through L3 VPN. So if we do via eVPN, e that is one use case for us. And if we do it through L3VPN, that is another use case for it. So that's one of the ways of doing using the underlay, the east-west traffic. And this is equivalent of what we do in DVR or something, but at the L2 layer. Now, the, another case is overlay end-to-end -end SFC for VM through L3VPN. So when we have VM1, VM2 in different, uh, uh, what do you call, compute nodes, and we want to have them chained for uh, applications, which is generally the carrier uh, grade applications. So for that, we want end-to-end -end SFC, and this can be done through L3 VPN as overlay. This is based on L3 totally. So we have many combinations, and at the same time, we want to make sure, you saw in the recent, uh, uh, whatever our summit here, Verizon has implemented uh, IPv6. So you are seeing that there is a opening uh, coming out for IPv6 in a big way. And we also eventually will have to look at if there is a uh, failure, how do you handle the failure? So therefore, we router HA through VRRP or whatever routing protocols are available. We'll have to evaluate them, and uh, those are the things we are evaluating as we talk. And there is always a black swan. You don't know what comes. Suddenly, there is a new project, uh, I said, uh, routed networks, which is being brought into Neutron in a major way. So we are going to see major shakeup there. So that may impact some of our uh, plans. But we do want to, as far as we are concerned, right now we are based on uh, what you call the Mitaka, so we should be able to handle that. But going to Newton, we'll have to have, see what uh, changes occur. So you see that at the end of the day, it is important that we allow innovation. Uh, and that's the reason we chose Service VM. And we hope to see this uh, sometimes into release D time frame probably to get into some kind of a lab readiness to field readiness type of things and eventually make sure that IPv6 is important from industry because in industry we see that mobility whenever it comes, it is, you get it free in IPv6 because just you add additional mobility headers to it. So that's very important from long term going towards 5G and all. So we expect that we will evolve, and that's why they have kept it very open, and I'm very happy that uh, our team has uh, collaboration from all the players, uh, from all vendors, all the service providers. I think at this time, I will open the floor for question and answer and give it to. OK. Oh, acknowledgment. Sorry, uh, I forgot. Uh, we, we <laughs> that's the most important thing as a community. and. Uh, you have contributors from ClearPath, Mark Medina. Then you have uh, John uh, from Nokia. Then Eben from uh, was Inspirant, now is in Brocade. Then we have Minakshi from uh, Cisco. Then we have Gao Kubigao from Huawei, who has helped us in testing in their labs and in our labs, I would say. Then 
Christian, <laughs> so community labs we call it. So we have the Linux Foundation lab where from we run, and uh, community labs are vendor provided like Intel's and Huawei's and Ericsson's, and also that's one. And so I should uh, also acknowledge to Christian for from cloud-based solutions and for setup and access support and all. And then we have Hennis uh, Frederick uh, from Red Hat, and I cannot uh, underestimate the value of. Sridhar, who has been very, <laughs> very, uh, uh, what do you call, leading the effort both on the OpenStack side as well as on ODL side. Uh, we couldn't get somebody on the Ono side or Open Country, but we, we are trying. We know that Ono does have a forwarding uh, in the code base in the IPv6, but we could not get to the routing, et cetera. Uh, and so we are addressing that. We are looking at the gap analysis and all. And uh, we are fortunate to have also a very good uh, manager who is very systematic. And you can see from the presentation itself that reflects the detail-oriented work of BIN. And we look forward to questions and uh, help from the community. We invite everybody to help because this is going to be a major uh, requirement for 5G as we go. Yeah. So questions, you can please go to the, uh, the microphone on the aisle. Uh, so uh, you have uh, created uh, many good documents. So I'm wondering if uh, you can upstream those documents to say neutron networking ODL project or open daylight project. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, that's a very good suggestion, and I will be very happy to upstream those documentations to the uh, neutron. And um, are you are you the uh, primary contact for us to do that, or? Uh, um, which yeah. channel do you suggest uh, to? For networking ODL, uh, yes, I, I'm, I am. And okay. for open direct neutron northbound, I am. And okay. uh, for open direct network, uh, it, it's some. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's uh, com uh, exchange the co uh, communication the, uh, information and we can do that. Yeah, thank you. That's a very good suggestion. Uh, one of the limitations I saw was regarding static IPv6 assignments to VMs mm -hmm. when DHCP is being used. If you're not using the DHCP agents, uh, are you able to statically assign at that point? So now we are using the Slack, the stat list, the uh, uh, um, address resolution, automatic address, the uh, configuration. Yeah, so that's uh, statically assigned IPv6 address not uh, okay, uh, supported gotcha. yet. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, you showed a uh, uh, page on gap analysis. So what's the communication path to upstream? I mean, I'd like to hear, uh, as a community member, I'd like to hear feedback. But so far, this is the first time to, I am aware of it. So okay, yeah, so. I, I'd, like to hear, I'd like to have a communication channel constantly. Yeah. So I think that's exactly the purpose that we're here to presenting our projects and hope that we can establish a communication path regularly and uh, down the road so that we can uh, collaborate together and uh, between the, for example, neutral project and our projects. And uh, that's exactly the, one of the purpose here is to establish the formal the communication, regular communication mm -hmm. channels. Thank you. You wanna, uh, <laughs> go ahead. Okay, <laughs> maybe we should talk, talk uh -huh. privately. Uh, so uh, you showed us some uh, POC by Onos, but what, is there any broker to the same with Open Daylight? Yeah, this one's right, yeah. The Direct plan system. is, for example, for now, we are only uh, installed the Open Daylight as a backend testing controller. Mm -hmm. And the plan is that we want to support all the different kind of popular testing controllers in, on the market, including the Open Control, including Onos. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but uh, we don't have the, resources, basically, meaning that experts that's on the uh, owner side and who is an expert that mm -hmm. knows more about mm -hmm. owners and how to co integrate that and can uh, combine that with the uh, OpenStack mm -hmm. as well as in how to use these owners, for example, mm -hmm. that's the same way as uh, ODL, right? Uh, yeah, regarding so, to open the right, I'm very willing to help you. Yeah, so we're looking for the community support and uh, especially with the expertise from different the, uh, dimensions, mm -hmm. different aspects, and help us to evolve the project to be uh, covered as broad as we can. I see. Yeah, thank you. 
Thank you all. Any more questions? Thank you very much.